Cam's younger brother, Val, was unconscious on the floor between the sofa and the coffee table. He was surrounded by the others. Kane, who was there for the homebrew, and Jane, who Kane had gone to fetch when he found out what was happening because he thought that she knew CPR. It was a long time ago, she said forlornly, crouching over Val's inert body, trying again to breathe into his mouth and press his chest. I only did it to a doll. Cam was hanging on the line to the hospital. He managed to get 33 seconds with a bot at the call centre, but it wasn't enough time to explain what had happened and tell them where to send the ambulance. They knew the address already, obviously. They also knew 30 seconds is too short a time to gather details in an emergency, but frustrating people is how they got customers to upgrade. Because Cam had used the word emergency, in addition to the usual commercial, he had to listen to a message upselling from the ad-funded version of Lifeguard, Cam's healthcare service, to the first paid tier, which only has ads in non-emergency calls. Cam couldn't even afford that. His brain is probably dead by now, Kane said, looking down sceptically at Val. His heart stopped beating ten minutes ago. How do you know when his heart stopped beating, Jane said scornfully. He's blue, Kane said. I heard there was a man who was kept alive for over an hour through CPR, Jane said, giving his chest another push. But she was getting tired. Bullshit. Val's dead. Cam may as well end that call and get on to the undertaker. We just need to send him to the hospital anyway, even if he's dead. Jane said. To this, Kane pulled a sceptical face. What's the point? It's only going to cost Cam money. Why are you such an insensitive shit? He's Cam's brother, for God's sake. See, now Jane was getting angry. Kane explained. Cam never really liked him. And Cam's my friend, and he's alive. I don't want him bankrupted. Jane sighed, trying to be patient. She said, Cam's going to need to get a death certificate from a doctor. Can't we just get Dr. Kim? Kane asked. He's a few blocks down and he'll do it for a fraction of the price. He's not a real doctor, Jane said. Struck off. Why else would he be working here? Will you shut up? Cam said, turning now from the speaker. He's not dead. I'm sorry, will you repeat that? The bot asked, as the commercial cut off suddenly. Did you say, he's not dead? No, he's not dead, Cam repeated. We need an ambulance, please, quickly, he's got a a heart attack. Address, please. Cam gave his address and another ad started. Amaranth Corporation would like to invite you to live forever, it said. Jeez, (laughs) Kane said. Have those assholes in the Amaranth marketing department ever been to basic? Why the hell would anyone stuck here in this fucking hellhole want to live forever? What kind of crap targeting do they have on their advertising? It's all rubbish anyway, Jane said. They just con people with more money than sense into having their blood replaced with the blood of young people. No, no no way, said Kane. It's true. Some crazy scientist says it rejuvenates your cells and makes you live longer. They injected mice with a plasma portion of blood from young mice. It made the old mice able to learn again. And now they do it to people. Where do they get the blood? Shut up, will you? Cam shouted. I need to concentrate in case a bot comes back on the line. Imagine if you had all the time in the world, the ad was still saying, beaming its silken voice through the speakers in the apartment. These were the ones fitted by the landlord that you couldn't remove without getting evicted. The landlord got money from the ad companies, of course. That's how the rent was kept so low. Or so they all said. The ad continued. A lifetime to play. Another lifetime to study. And one after that for adventure and travel. Please give your address. The lifeguard bot's robotic voice cut rudely into the fantasy the ad had created. I just did! Cam said knowing that he shouldn't really lose his temper, but becoming increasingly frustrated and desperate. We have no record of that. Cam garbled the address again quickly, managing to get it out before the end of the 30 seconds and receiving a metallic, confirmed, before another ad began.
In need of credit? Another ad said. Amaranth needs blood. If you're under 25 and healthy, this might be your lucky day. We offer incredible rewards for lifetime contributors. I can't believe they... Kane started. For Pete's sake, will you just shut up? Cam said. I'm so sorry, sir. The nurse said, switching off the TV in Cam's hospital room. I'm not sure what happened. I'll get a technician to deal with it immediately. You really shouldn't be seeing ads. Can I get you something to read in the meantime? Cam shook his head and looked out of the room onto the Parkland view. There were more trees than he'd ever seen in his whole life. I'm sorry about your brother, she said. Cam shrugged. He was brain dead on arrival. There was nothing, anything, anyone could do. Still, it must be good to know that he's making a positive contribution to other people's lives now. Cam thought of his brother's body, hooked up to the life support machine downstairs. After Cam had signed the consent forms, he'd watched as Val had been connected to the Amaranth Corporation blood farm machine. It was now downstairs taking Val's blood as fast as he could make it. Cam glanced at the machine next to him, pumping that same young blood into him. The nurse said, I mean, really, he has such an unusual blood group. It's really lucky that you were a match. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, wasn't it? Cam said. 